I mean, they won a championship and we went with Taco Tuesday. Okay. Well, how about this alley oop? There we go. Basketball stuff. Thank you. They won a whole championship and we went with Taco Tuesday as their best moment. They won a whole championship. Amazing. More top moments. November 15th, 2019. LeBron. Oh, I miss fans. Yeah. I miss games with fans. Posterizing. Nemanja Bielica. Bielica, whatever. He posterized <laughs> that poor fellow that you'll probably never hear from. <laughs> September, Nuggets Lakers. Ho, oh, game two of the West Final. Take a listen. The three pointer at the bottom. Rondo with 2.1. Bounces it in. Davis a three for the win. He hit it. Anthony Davis, a buzzer bidding three pointer. 105 103. Lakers win. Biggest moment of AD's career. But oh, Mike Brain, what a great call. October 11th, 2020. LeBron and AD capture the first title together with the Lakers, defeating Miami in six games. LeBron's fourth career NBA championship. Davis's first LeBron named Finals MVP. <laughs> NBA insider Brian Windhorse joining us now. And Wendy, how did LeBron's contract extension influence the Anthony Davis deal? Well, technically, they were separate, even though they were negotiated uh, by the same man, Rich Paul, with the same team, the Lakers. But I have to say that it's kind of sending a message. And these were conservative contracts. If you can call a $190 million deal a conservative contract, it takes a pessimistic view of where the salary cap is going to go for the next few years. Um, traditionally, both players would want to maintain their options and uh, be able to hit the market again next year to potentially sign for more money and frankly hold the Lakers feet to the fire a little bit on spending. Not that I think they would go anywhere, but both of them elected to guarantee their money and lock in before they really needed to do so. And the ancillary benefit for the Lakers here is they now have their two stars under comfortable long-term contract. LeBron for three more years and Anthony Davis for four more years before his option. And at the end of the day, that meeting of the minds, those guys taking what they feel is the best guarantee right now versus the Lakers having certainty, ends up giving the Lakers a great position going forward. Yeah, I would love that to be my conservative type of contract that LeBron and AD, of course, <laughs> get in that big deal. Windhorse has an article up on ESPN.com right now about LeBron and what it means for the future of the Lakers. Switching gear now, you talk about a blockbuster trade yesterday. Russell Westbrook, John Wall, plus a first-round pick. What's been the reaction around the league to this swap? Yeah, I know it, this sounds strange. I'm going to admit this right off the bat because we're talking about two all-star point guards making $40 million who were traded for each other. But in the league, people look at this as not so much about Westbrook and, and Wall, but about James Harden and Bradley Beal and how their you know, short-term futures are with their teams. This move by the Wizards, especially including a first-round pick, is an effort to try to improve this year to make it into the playoffs. And that could mean a lot with what Bradley Beal feels about this organization going forward. And in Houston, this is an opportunity to try to hold this together with James Harden. The marriage with Russell Westbrook had failed. It was going to be a difficult uh, tandem to start the season with, and they're trying to sub in John Wall to save it. Now, if you ask my personal opinion about whether this is going to change Harden's view, I do not think that it will. But is the Rockets getting a pick and sort of hedging that John Wall may be better over the three years remaining on this contract, even with that Achilles injury, than Russell Westbrook. Yeah, Wendy, this is fascinating on all levels. Second time Harden Westbrook has failed. They had it in Oklahoma City. It didn't work again in Houston. And now you're talking about a player in Russell Westbrook who you could argue is a top 10 player in this league now on his third destination. We'll see if this one works in D.C. And we'll see if Harden can hang out in Houston, although many people are doubt that that can happen. Brian Windhorst with us on SportsCenter. Wendy, thank you. Well, I can't wait for that. The big news, all NBA forward Anthony Davis finalizing a five-year, $190 million max contract to stay with the Lakers. Clutch Sports CEO and founder Rich Paul tells ESPN. Davis is a free agent. He considered several short and long-term contract scenarios and is expected to sign this new deal at some point today. It's been a busy offseason for the Lakers. Here's Woj with more. AD considered uh, several scenarios, shorter deals, uh, medium-sized deals, and ultimately decided on the longest deal he could do. And now that five-year, $190 million deal, 
His agent, Rich Paul, tells me will include an early termination option before the 2024-25 season where he can go back in, do another extension with the Lakers and you know still be just 32 years old and, and get another, presumably get another max deal. All right, so the five-year max deal for Davis will start with a salary of nearly $33 million for the upcoming season, goes over $40 million in 23 and 24, and could potentially hit $43 million in the final season, although there is an early termination option for that year. It becomes the largest contract by total value in Lakers history, about $37 million more than LeBron's first contract with the club. I want to welcome in our NBA analyst, Kendrick Perkins, busy this morning. And Perk, <laughs> Lakers lock up their core AD and LeBron after making some key changes to the supporting cast. How would you grade the Lakers offseason? Well, first of all, Matt, the Brinks trucks and Loomis trucks are at the Staples Center right now. I would give them an A-plus because Rob Palenka is doing his thing. He won in the offseason, and we're talking about the NBA champions, and they've upgraded tremendously, getting the sixth man of the year, Montrez Harrell, from that cross-time rival, going to get the run-up for sixth man of the year in the trade in Dennis Schroeder, a guy who can give you 19 points a game and who's a dog on the defensive end, and then all of a sudden you land a Wesley Matthews for $3.6 million, getting off a Danny Green contract, who I believe was worth about 15 to 16 million dollars, and now you lock up your generational talent, Anthony Davis, a guy over the next five years who's now just reaching his prime, could possibly be in the MVP conversation every single year or win the MVP. And then you bless the Wash King, old LeBron James, and extend him to a contract. Rob Palenka is doing a hell of a job, and the Lakers is winning big time right now in the free agency. Yeah, Perk, the argument's out there. In fact, I don't even know if it's much of an argument that this Lakers roster now better than the one they won the championship with earlier this fall. Meanwhile, the other big news in the last 24 hours, a blockbuster trade sending Russell Westbrook to the Wizards in exchange for John Wall in a 2023 first round pick. So let's address one of the big questions from this trade. How will Westbrook and Wall fit in their new homes? Starting with Westbrook. We know he loves the basketball in his hands. And we'll have to figure out how to balance that with Bradley Beal. Both players rank in the top 10 in scoring average and in the top 6 in usage percentage. Russ is one of the NBA's best creators in the NBA. Is going to look to keep that going and Washington. Over the last five seasons, he has averaged nearly 20, 20 potential assists per game, the most in the NBA. Who's second? John Wall, but he has not played an NBA game since December 26, 2018. Like Westbrook did last year, Wall will have to work with James Harden, who was also used to having a basketball. Since 2015, both Wall and Harden each rank in the top five in touches per game in average touch length. So if you look at those numbers, you're trying to figure out how this thing's going to work. And Kendrick Perkins, what impact will Russell Westbrook have on Bradley Beal's game? Oh, he's going to have a huge impact. If you look, go back and look at Russ Oklahoma City days with Paul George. Paul George was playing some of the best basketball of his career alongside Russell Westbrook. And I expect the same thing with Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is a guy that don't need the ball in his hands to be able to score the basketball. And Russell Westbrook is going to make sure he get his touches. Russell Westbrook is going to put that key in his back. He's going to be the engine for the Washington Wizards. I love everything about it. And here it is.